Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing the anti kickback law, the Stark law, and physician owned distributors. Now, if we're going to understand healthcare finance, it's very important for us to understand certain laws, and certainly these are two of them. Okay, first up, the federal anti kickback law, which is sometimes abbreviated AKL, says that no money can be paid to doctors to buy or order products or refer patients. And this is specifically under Medicare and Medicaid programs, right? Because those are the uh, and other federal health care programs, right? Because this is a federal law and it affects federal reimbursement. Okay, now an example of this would be like a drug company cannot outright pay a doctor to prescribe a medication because of course the doctor is supposed to do what is in the best interest of the patient and what the medical literature and the scientific evidence show not necessarily what they're getting paid to do. So you would not want to create that, that bias or that conflict of interest. Okay, next up, we have the Stark Law, where a doctor cannot refer a patient to a hospital if they have a financial relationship with that hospital. So for example, a hospital cannot pay a doctor for referrals. So that financial relationship might be like, okay, well, if you do X number of admissions or referrals to this particular hospital, then the hospital is going to pay you a quote unquote bonus, right? Now you can't do that. So you can almost think of the anti-kickback law and the Stark law as being similar with the anti-kickback law being for things like pharmaceutical companies and medical device companies and the uh, Stark law being for things like the hospital in terms of physician reimbursement. Now there's a huge exception to the Stark law and that is ambulatory uh, surgery centers or ASCs where physicians can actually own or be part owners of an ambulatory surgery center. Now there's a ton of rules like they actually have to perform surgeries at that ambulatory surgery center, etc. But that actually kind of gets around it. So just know that there are instances where physicians will receive additional compensation for referring to a particular facility because they're a part owner of it. And so they receive like profit distributions quarterly or at the end of the year or what have you. Now, this brings us to the PODs, the physician owned distributors. What in the world is that? So I'm gonna, believe it or not, there's actually a middleman that is a reseller, most typically of like surgical implants, like screws for spinal surgeries or other implants for spinal surgeries where and I drew a little uh, diagram here where like the manufacturer of said implant or screw will sell the screw or implant to a POT, to a physician owned distributor. That physician owned distributor will then turn around and sell that same device or implant to the hospital. Now I put some fictitious dollar amounts here. So let's say the, the, the POD buys it from the manufacturer for a thousand bucks and then they in turn sell it for $1,500 to the hospital. Well, they then keep the $500 or 50% of, or a third, I should say, of what the, uh, the overall sale price was to the hospital. Now, here's the problem. The doctor, the surgeon himself says to the hospital, hey, I need this particular type of screw or implant from this particular POD, and that doctor is a part owner of that POD. So in other words, they get to keep that $500. So in, in essence, this arrangement circumvents the anti-kickback law because you can think of that additional $500 as like the kickback from the manufacturer for being able to distribute it out to the hospital. So they can both be the distributor, that they, the doctor, can both be the distributor and create the demand for that particular product. Okay, now I'll leave a link in the show notes, but the feds actually went after a particular device company back in 2013 and this particular uh, company worked with like 12 different PODs. Oh, by the way, PODs are found in like 43 out of the 50 states with the largest being in California and in Texas. Now you would think, okay, that's 2013, that was a while ago. Well, it turns out that just in March of this year, 2019, Senator Grassley from Iowa wrote a letter to the Department of Health and Human Services, which of course administers CMS and Medicare, and says, so I hear that these PODs are still an issue and they still might be allowing physicians to get around the anti-kickback law. So I just wanna say that the point for today is is that the healthcare supply chain is filled with markups and it's filled with incentives that potentially will change the opinion of the physician and will increase healthcare costs. And oftentimes those relationships and those markups are hidden. So I wanted to show one of them to you today.
and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.